So, so what I'd like to talk about is what's the cost, the social cost of climate change? What we all know is that it means costly damages. Climate has real negative costly damages. But we also have to remember that climate policy has real and costly damages. And so what I just want to uh, use my five minutes to really talk about is how do we think smartly about how to put those two things together. This is uh, basically what climate economics has been working on for the last 30 years. This is what uh, 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 William Nordhaus got his Nobel Prize for. So I'm basically going to describe to you how, how you might also get uh, a, a Nobel Prize. And <laughs> I see Tyrol is not interested. I already got one. Uh, but but uh, apart from that, so let me just show you very quickly. Uh, Nordhaus basically makes a model and says, what would happen if we do nothing? How much would that cost us in terms of impacts? And what he finds is this would cost $140 trillion in today's money. Obviously, there's a whole slew of assumptions behind this, and I'm sure we'll get into that. But I just want you to see sort of the general point instead, because I think that's a much more useful conversation if we're going to know how to think about climate. $140 trillion, that's a lot of money. That's a truckload of money. That's more than a whole, wor uh, whole year worth of, of the global economy right now. If we reduce temperatures down to 3.5 or 3 or 2.5, his model can only go to 2.15, which probably also sounds pretty correct. The damages go smaller and smaller, as you'd expect. This, I think, is the picture of how we think about climate change today. Lower temperatures, less damages. That's absolutely true. But we forget that to get to those temperatures, we also have to pay a policy cost. Now, the policy cost, obviously, of no policy is zero. If you start reducing, so let's say we go down to 3.5 degrees, you actually have to introduce some sort of costly policy to reduce everyone to spend uh, less or emit less CO2. You do that with a global carbon tax. We talked about that before. You start off with $36 uh, per ton of CO2. You end up uh, by the end of the century by more than, with more than $130 or $40, uh, I believe. This obviously requires everyone in the world to play ball, but we're just assuming right now. If you say three, uh, three degrees, if you want to get to 2.5, it starts getting really expensive. And at uh, 2.15, it's an eye-watering $177 trillion. The point here is we have to pay both. We can't just say, oh, we have to pay the climate damages but not the climate policy costs. Of course, we have to pay both. And so Nordhaus' insight and really the whole conversation here that ec economics brings to the table is to say, look, these are the choices that we have for our costs. These are the climate costs but we also have to pay the other ones. No cost for the no policy, but then they start increasing up here. And the simple and I think brilliant insight from climate economists is simply to say, given that we have to pay both, we should focus on where we can pay the least in total. That is, where does this hurt the, m the minimum of all the things? And that turns out in Nordhaus' model to be this. The optimal outcome is 3.5 degrees. Notice how this is a very, very different outcome from what we normally hear. Because if you hear that it's only climate damages that matter, you're very likely to say, well, then we should reduce down to 2 degrees or 1.5. That's the whole political conversation right now. That makes sense if that's the only cost. But there is another cost, namely the policy cost. If we have to do both, we have to have a much less harsh policy, because if we do too harsh of a policy, we might actually end up doing too much bad. I think this is a good conversation starter. It's by no means the end of the conversation, but it is an interesting one. Before, so I just amended my talk, and I just have 20 seconds left, but I just wanted to uh, let you know, you heard earlier on that, uh, that global warming could cost 20% of GDP. Uh, and that was also what the, uh, the, uh, the former uh, head of uh, Swiss Re said. It's based on a phenomenally bad uh, uh, climate report from Swiss Re. They basically took the academic estimate and multiplied by 10. I've, I've, I've uh, shared that out on Twitter, and you can see all the links there if, if you're interested. But I just wanted to show you this one graph or this one picture, which is from the UN Climate Panel, because I 
happen to think that evidence actually still matters and we should be looking at what is actually the cost of global warming. And the UN Climate Panel in 2018 in their 1.5 degree report uh, uh, told us this. This is on page 256 if you want to look it up. You can also see the link there. And what they tell us is under no policy baseline scenario, temperatures rise by 3.66 degrees by 2100, resulting in a global gross domestic product loss of 2.6%. This is important because saying it's 20% obviously means that you're willing to give 10% of your income to fix the 20% problem. If the real problem is 2.6%, which is what the UN Climate Panel and the evidence tells us, you would probably be less likely to give away 10% of your income to fix it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bjorn. Oh, don't walk back. Bjorn, in fact, is really an eager Twitter. Uh, we all read his tweet two uh, hours ago about this. That's fantastic. You go on, on, on. Perfect.